So, uh, welcome on the Buddha side of Budapest and welcome here at Harkon. My name is Gábor Nádai. You can find me uh, on the internet as Mephi. I'm working here at Arcon for actually four years now at the front-end team. And let me talk about a few things about Arcon. Uh, we are a Hungarian company. We are, uh, our main project is ingatlan.com. Have you ever heard about Arcon or ingatlan.com or Köpenyeg? Hands up in the air. All right, that's nice. So, uh, ingatlan.com is Hungary's number one real estate advertising site. Actually, advertising is not the great word because uh, it's a listing site. So if you're looking for a new home to buy or to rent, then go to the site. Or if you would like to uh, rent or sell your home, also go to the site because it's pretty cool. And uh, we are working on Köpenyeg, which is a very uh, popular weather site here in Hungary. We are working in Scrum. We have five, 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 five Scrum teams, actually, with uh, two to five people. <coughs> we are working in sprints. One sprint is two weeks long, so I think you know the story. And uh, we, we sometimes organize meetups here, just like now. And uh, I consider this talk is a, is a beginner's talk because uh, we are not beginners in developing, but we are beginners with Node because it's a PHP company. So we come to the, from the PHP world. We we have uh, many years uh, experience in PHP, and almost everyone used here Node, but uh, just for fun and just for hobby projects. So not really on any production uh, project. And we sometimes use Python, and of course, as you see, Node. How we got started? We had some situations to solve around three corner problems. One was locations, one was sending mails, and one was price changes. So what about locations? We have a location database called MapsDB. It is actually, I think it's the most accurate location database here in Hungary. It has all of the zones, cities, streets, uh, counties, and everything uh, in Hungary with geolocation and everything you need. And because of listing, it's most important uh, thing is the location, so we need it very well. And all of our systems use it very well. And we need an application that can serve these locations with a REST API. What about emails? We wanted to notify our users when one of the listings price uh, has changed. So we want to send a mail that, hello, your listing, which is your favorite listing, has changed the price. What about price changes? We would like to show a chart of listings price changes. It's not uh, complete yet, so we're working on it, but we have, uh, we have everything to do this right now because of Node. Why Node? Uh, for these problems, we, we found that PHP is not the perfect solution. For example, if you would like to notify your users of a price change, you, you don't really you don't have to do it with PHP because how, how would you do it in, in PHP? You have a PHP application in a Chrome tab or something like that. That's, that's not that's the perfect way. Node is much more better for that. And uh, one of the greatest powers in Node that the syntax is very familiar. How many of you use JavaScript ever? All right, <laughs> I, I thought so. So, and uh, if you if you don't know Node, uh, you know the syntax, and you can learn it very, very easy and very, very fast. And it's widely used and has a very great community. Just look around here on the meetup, and almost have an infinite number of libraries thanks to npm. What was strange after PHP? It's, it's my problem that browser refresh is not enough anymore because if you have a website in, in a node application and you modify the CSS or the HTML, it's not enough in just like in the PHP world that you refresh the browser, you have to restart the application. I know there are tools for this, but it was strange after the PHP world. Uh, the async, async operation and callbacks and promises, I don't say it was hard, but it was, it needed a, a different thinking of problems and uh, it was strange for the first time. And still love because uh, I found NPM was very cool. Why? Because uh, have you ever worked with PHP projects? All right, I see. <laughs> so, uh, have you ever worked on a PHP project that you clone the repo and composer install or composer update and it worked instantly? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And have you ever worked with a Node project that you clone the repo, uh, start npm install, start the application, and it works instantly? 
Yes, that's why I love, and that, that's why it's very strange in the good way for me that uh, NPM after Composer or PHP or anything else. So I will talk about mostly the Prize Observer application, which is the one, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, it sends notifications to the users if the price of the listing has changed. It listens to RabbitMQ channel. RabbitMQ, have you ever heard about it? All right, I see. So uh, it's got a message. It listens to it, get notification about the price changes, call its users from MySQL database, and calls the front-end API. Uh, here at Archon, we, we don't say front-end for, for the things you would say front-end. We, we call front-end the, the interface uh, for the searches. So if you, if you go to the site and looking for a listing or uh, looking for some new home, that's the application we call front-end. So we have an API which can uh, get back the data of the uh, listing, uh, for example, with the price and the pictures and everything else. And after that, it sends an email. What are the ingredients? And by ingredients, I mean libraries, because uh, when, we, when we tried this, uh, this, uh, this speech, the question was, how, how did you find libraries? And we mostly Googled it. So because we don't, we don't really have any Node experience, we, we just Googled it. We would like to solve this problem with Node, how to do that. And uh, we found that libraries with, with uh, GitHub links, we, we checked if how many people forked it, how many people started it, and everything else. So what are these libraries? We use the Express. And I'm 100% sure that all of you know Express and what is Express. It's pretty cool. In the price of server application, we just have one thing for Express, but I would like to try Express, so that's why I choose Express. It's a, it's a status application or site. If you call the application with slash status, it's, it says OK or something error, and we're monitoring it with that. We use Next. Have you heard about Next? All right. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, flexible, portable, everything else. It's an SQL query builder. So uh, it works like you have a connection, and after that, you can easily write SQL queries. Actually, I have a line of code, but it's not visible. I don't know why. Sorry for that. Oh, here is it. <laughs> so it's a simple SQL query from select title, author, year from books. and. Uh, it uses promises, and it's a very, very easy way to write SQL queries. And we have, I don't know, a six or seven line SQL query and lines SQL query, and it's uh, very easy to write it with this library. It's about the white screen, actually. That's why. <laughs> so we use Swig. Uh, I choose Swig because uh, it's it's a syntax is very familiar from Twig, from the Symfony world, and uh, I found it very easy. I almost know everything in the syntax, so I use it for templating in the mail. I got these uh, lines from the GitHub uh, readme file. <coughs> you can see the, uh, see the points in this. We use request for, for calling APIs and what I mentioned earlier as we collect the data of the listing. It's also very cool, also very easy. It has a uh, many forks, many stars, and everything else. So it, it seems the perfect choice for this problem. And I use NodeMiller for sending mails. Have you ever heard about NodeMiller? All right, that's cool. Uh, it's very simple, and uh, again, after the PHP word, when I use SwiftMiller, and, and I have a lot of pain with it, it was very simple for the first time. So actually, in the very, after, 10 minutes, I got a working solution, which is which is in production right now. So I think it's very fast and very cool. And in the production environment, we use log4js for logging everything of the application. Uh, today, I uh, talked with our infra team that why are we using forever GS? They told me that they are Googled it, and <laughs> it, it seems the perfect way. Uh, the application is run, running continuously, and forever GS is uh, is, uh, is for running continuously. So if the application stops somehow, then it's restarted, and if it can't restart it, then it sends a mail or something like that. So it's also a very cool library for that. So what's the conclusion? The price of server application deployed on 27 January. For the first day, uh, the emails sent, not for the users, but our team address, 
just to be sure, we checked everything was good and everything is in the place at the, at the email. And as we found that everything is going extremely well, the next day we deployed it for the users. And since, th since then, it sends more than 45,000 uh, people's uh, mails that it sent. And it took one sprint, which is here two weeks, for two developers to create it. So I think it was very fast. And, uh, and considering that we, this is the first Node application in production that we are creating, I think it's a very good effort of it. And here is the mail. It's in Hungarian, but I think you get the point because this is the old price of the listing and this is the new price. It sends mails if, uh, if the price is increased or, or uh, decreased. It doesn't matter, and you can go to the to the side of the listing. So that's about it. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Yes. Uh, could you say something about how do you host your application? Yes, uh, we we are not in the cloud. We have uh, we have our servers, and uh, and we are hosting it on land. So we have a, a virtual machine which is running the application, and. That's what, I'm, that's what I know about it, actually. Any more questions? Yes? Do you write unit tests for <laughs> In this project, somehow, I didn't. I don't know why. But uh, in, in the next talk, when my colleague Gabor will talk, he will talk about unit tests. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I usually write unit tests. So. Yes? Is there any way for external developers to use your API to geolocation or geolocation? It's not open right now, but uh, we are working on it. Uh, the main problem is that we, we bought another uh, database and, and we can't really sell to other users for free, so it's, it's low actually, that's why it's closed. But uh, we are thinking about, thinking about it uh, constantly that uh, we should open it because uh, because it has everything actually, so one day might be. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes? Prices go up or down? I don't know actually. I think in the first day when we checked the mails, it's my experience, but it mostly go up. But I, this, is not, this, is not a, this is not a perfect. Uh, statistic about it, so it's just, just my experience. All right. Thank you very much.